chapter 13 tonight. Luke chapter 13. What a friend we have in Jesus. And I'm glad to know that He's my friend. Amen. Amen, amen. Luke chapter 13. Not only do I love Him, but He loves me. The Bible said He loved us when we were yet sinners. I'm so thankful tonight for His love. Luke 13 and verse 10. And it says, And He was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. Behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity for eighteen years, and was bowed together, and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, He called her to Him. And he said unto her, Woman, for thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid and he laid his hand on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. And the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. And he said unto the people, For there are six days in which men ought to work in them, therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. And then the, and the Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doest thou not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his donkey from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman bring a daughter of Abraham, which was a Jew, and whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years to be loosed from the bond on, on the Sabbath day? And when he had said these things, all of his adversaries adversaries were ashamed, and all of the people rejoiced for all of the glorious things that were done by Him. Would you pray with me tonight? Heavenly Father, we thank You for the Word tonight. Lord, we thank You for the opportunity to bring the Word tonight, and we pray, God, for Your anointing. I pray, Lord, for You to touch us tonight as those that's gathered here in Your name. And Lord, we give You praise and glory and honor. Lord, we just asking for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Can't do it in herself, and we know that You'll give it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Thank you for honoring God's Word. Praise the Lord. Well, there ain't no problem with social distancing on Wednesday night, are there? <laughs> wow. Kind of like calling the hall square bells of hay. But we're glad you're here tonight. Jesus here in this place tonight in the Word of God has found a lady in a horrible fix. And she's in a, in a very serious shape in her physical body. And He has compassion upon her uh, at this place in the Word of the Lord. Verse number uh, 11 says, And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. Now notice this. Verse 11 says, For 18 years, and she was bowed together, and could in no wise lift up herself. What a fix. And I begin to look at that tonight, begin to look at verse 11 and, and other verses as well. But I begin to look at this verse and see what a place this, this woman's life was in. Now there was a reasoning for that, and we can find the reasoning for that in verse 16. And Jesus said, Ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham whom who has bound, whom Satan hath bound? Lo, these 18 years. Jesus gives us the, the one that had her bound, and it was Satan, had her bound for 18 long years of time. I begin to think about the things that Satan does in the lives of people. This lady's life had been tormented for 18 solid years because of the infirmity that the devil had placed in her life. 18 years she'd been this way. No doubt there was many nights that that lady probably hurt so bad from the, from the, the disease that had been placed there that she probably said to herself, I will never get better from this. There's probably been many days that along the town's way said to her, this is going to be the end of you. Probably at the first, there was, a, there was people that said, we will remember you. There was people that may have said, you know, we're concerned about you. Eighteen years had gone by and she's not gotten any better. 
she's still in this same place. I begin to think about how horrible things is in the lives of people. This was a disease that Satan had placed there and was tormenting her. But I begin to think about on the side of how awful sin is in the life of people. There's people that, ha that have lived for so long a period of time in sin that they do not know what it is like to be free. There's people that have lived in sickness so long that they do not know what it is like to feel good. There's people that live in, those st in, in the state, but in the nature of sin, people have lived that way for so long, but they continually get worse day by day by day. Jesus came to this woman and he had compassion on her. But you got to realize something. He, he distinguished, I'll get my words in a minute. He distinguished who had placed her in this place. He said, Satan has had her bound 18 years of time. This is not something that just popped up this morning. This has been a long, ongoing process. And as she began to, to no doubt, when Jesus touched her immediately, she began to feel the release that was in her life. Friend of mine, I can tell you tonight, when a person's life has been changed by Christ, there is always a difference there. I, I believe that with all of my heart. And he said unto her, and said verse 12, and it said, and when Jesus saw her, he what did he do to her? He didn't shun her. He didn't put her aside, but he called her to him, and he said unto her, woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. I can tell you no doubt her heart rejoiced at that time. The Bible said he laid his hand on her, and immediately she was made what? Straight. The Bible Bible says in verse 13 that immediately she was made straight and she glorified God. She had been bent over and and note and, and you, you know you we can only imagine what that must have felt like for that length of time to be in such a prostate position. How horrible that her body must have felt. But to hear the sweet voice of Christ say to, to her, come here. And to all of a sudden just to feel the touch of the master's hand as he touched her and immediately she was made straight. The Bible tells us that. And when she was made straight, what did she do? She glorified God. Amen. Can I just say to you tonight when a person's life has been transformed, when they have been, when they have been brought out of darkness into the glorious light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, they are made straight straight. Amen. They are made straight by the touch of the master's hand. Amen. As Jesus touched her, he brought her from the place where she was in tormenting pain and in, in, in such a hard place. But he transformed her life and the word of God says she was made straight and the Bible says this lady began to glorify God. Amen. Oh friend, it, it, it shouldn't be a strange thing for a child of God to glorify him. Amen? Why? Because we realize at where we were and we realize that at where we could have been. That lady no doubt could remember from times I passed the days and the nights of agony that she had spent in this place. No doubt she could remember the pain that she had felt from days. No doubt she could remember trying to find somebody that would help her. Somebody that would give her the just what she needed but could never find anybody. And friend of mine, we know this much tonight that she desired more than anything for the touch. Verse 11 said, And behold, there was a woman which had the spirit of infirmity for 18 years and was bowed together and could do nothing and in, in, in no wise the latter part of verse 11 says and in, in and could in no wise lift herself this lady couldn't do anything for herself she couldn't she couldn't make this thing better she couldn't make herself whole but boy what a touch of jesus done for her 
There's a world of people out there that's trying to do things within themselves. There's a world of people out there that are trying, to, they're, they're going through the life, going through life, that they're thinking, well, when I can get all of this in my life fixed, then I'm going to serve God. Boy, well, when I can get all of this just fixed and done right, then I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. If you're waiting for that, the enemy's always going to throw something in your way. I've had people just, I've had said, man, won't you come to church? Boy, if I could ever find time, preacher, I would. I'm going to tell you something. If you're waiting till you can ever find time, then you'll probably never find it. All right? Why? Because the devil will always bring something by your way. There are going to be times that there's things, is good. there's times that things has to be done. All right? I realize that very real. I realize that very much. But I can tell you this. There'll come a time when you're just going to have to lay it down and say, if this makes it, it makes it. If it don't, it don't. But I'm still going to serve God. This lady realized she couldn't lift herself. She realized that I can't do it. Amen. Oh, friend, when we come to that place right there in our spiritual walk with God, we're gaining ground. Amen. We're gaining ground because so many people in this world are built up on their self. Man, these books out there selling off the shelf of self-helps and self-this and self-that. I can tell you tonight, friends, self can do very little. I will say this. There's some people that could do more than what they do, but self can do nothing when it comes to the kingdom of God. We must always relied upon him. This lady realized that self has kept me. I've been in this way for 18 straight years, not able to raise myself up. But when I got near the master, oh friend, what a difference it must have been when she got near to him. Can I tell you, when you get close to him, you can hear his voice. I, I said you can hear his voice. You can feel the touch of the master's hand. And friend, you can also, if you if you things in your life's not right, they can be made straight. Amen? But you and I can't make them that way. But Jesus Christ can change situations. Amen. And he certainly did in her life. He changed situations. Can you imagine how different her home must have looked that night when she got there? I've known people that have faced things in hardship and in and, and I'm assuming I don't know, but this leads me to believe this may have been back issues or something of that nature. If you've ever had a back problem, then you can identify. I've had my share of them. I've had my share and your share too if you ain't never had any. And there ain't no fun thing about them. There'll be times you'll wonder how you're going to get by from day to day. I'll just tell you. And then you'll wonder how... An old enemy come by and show you how washed up you are and how, how bad a shape you're in, how you can't go and do nothing. 18 years she had been there. Bowed in that shape, bowed over, bent over, hurting, no doubt, to be on compare. But she touched Jesus. She touched Jesus. And Jesus, or Jesus touched her. And what a difference was in her life. Verse 14 said, And the rulers of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. This has always been just a little bit of bothersome to me to find people that were troubled because a woman had been made whole. Friend, I want to rejoice when somebody's healed. It's a blessing for me when somebody stands up and says, Boy, Pastor, we was at home the other night and God healed my body. Do you think that made me mad that they wasn't at church and somebody over there didn't get the glory for laying their hands on them? No, not at all. I'm just glad that God healed them. I'm just glad that the Lord laid in there and touched them and been healed them and restored them. But the rulers of the synagogue, the leaders had gotten upset that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. Not taking into consideration 18 full years in this woman's 
life had been spent in agonizing pain because of the power of Satan that held her bound because of the infirmity in her life that the enemy had placed there. 18 years she had been in that Jesus moved in her life and that spirit that the enemy had placed there had no other option but to leave this vessel in whom Christ has touched and that lady glorified God for the touch. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we ought to glorify God for everything that he does for you and I. We wouldn't have air to breathe tonight in these lungs. This bodies of ours wouldn't be able to be in the house of the Lord tonight if Satan had his way. But by the grace and the mercy of an almighty God, he restoreth not only our soul, but he restoreth our bodies and he keeps us day by day. I can tell you this, friend, I don't know from one day to the next day, from one week to the next week, but I do know this, when God's done with me, I gave my life to him in an altar of prayer a long time ago, and I asked him to be Lord, ownership, lordship of my life. I asked him, and I've asked him multiple times over, Lord, lead me, guide me, and direct me. I can tell you this tonight, when God gets done with me, he's going to call for me home. He's going to call for the breath that he placed in this vessel that made it live. This body's going to go back down to the dirt, and it's going to be there. But friend, until he's done with you and I, I can tell you this, there is nothing got power or control over you. So we're in pretty good hands. The best that I know of when we put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ and we depend solely and wholly upon him. Lord, whenever you're ready, we're ready too. Amen? But not until this lady come to the realization that Jesus' touch was more to her than anything else. The word of God says she glorified him. Folks, I want you to know something. I believe in this hour that we're living in. Men ought to glorify God. Why? We need to glorify God that the world can see that there's something in the church that's different than what they've got. They've got pain, they've got heartache, they've got sorrow there. But may they see the joy of our salvation in our life. You don't got to make t-shirts, you don't got to wave banners, but I do tell you this, we ought to live like we're men and women of God. That ought to be a joy and not a dredge. That ought to be a joy in our life and not something that if we feel like it's just work to us to live for him. No, it's a joy. This lady glorified God. This lady was glorifying. He said, boy, preacher, if I'd had the Lord to do something like that for me, I'd glorify God too. Can I tell you something? He has done something like that for you if you're a born again believer. He brought you out of the pit of sin. Do you know what sin? will do. The Bible says when it's finished it brings forth death. Do you realize that if Satan would have had his way in my life and your life, you'd already been dead. If he'd have had his way, you'd have done been washed up. But I can tell you this, we are to glorify our Creator with everything we've got in us. We are to honor Him with every fiber of our being. It ought to be not our will, Lord, but Thy will be done in me and through me, Lord, that I might glorify glorify you, that I might exalt you, that I might lift you up, that I might be what you would have me to do. And this lady in verse 11 says she could not lift up herself. Couldn't do it. For 18 years. How many people are you seeing just like myself that's trying to lift themselves up out of something? Huh? I realize there's programs, some of them good, some of them ain't. There's some programs, people go in, they come out worse than they were when they went in. But I can tell you this. I've got a program you can go in and you'll be better than you've ever been. And it ain't a program. It's living for Jesus Christ. He can make you whole where you've been incomplete. He can make, take darkness and make light. Why? Because of the love of Christ that lives within inside you. 
people have tried to lift themselves out of addiction can't do it tried to lift themselves up out of alcoholism and they can't do it they've tried to lift themselves up out of this thing and that thing and something else and they can't do it Jesus spoke to her and she what did she do let's read it again in verse 10 was it 11 10 and 11 the first and it says, And behold, there was a woman of, which had a spirit of infirmity. We've been there and went together. And, and Jesus saw her, verse 12, and, called to, and he called her to him. Now you notice that. The Bible says he did what? He called her to him. Now notice, what did he do for you and I through the Spirit, through the Holy Spirit? What did he do when we were so engulfed in sin? He called us, where to? To him. He called to us, and what did we do? We answered him. Verse 12 said, And he called her unto him, and he said, Unto her woman, for thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her and now notice this in the, in the middle there of verse 13. And immediately she was made whole. She was set free not five years down the road, not after a 10-step program, but she was set free immediately from the bond that Satan had in her life. She was set free immediately from that and was loosed of this, although it had been 18 years in the progressing, 18 years all the way through, but when Christ touched her, it wasn't 18 years of recovery, but it was immediately that she she recovered from that immediately rising up and realizing that now I have been touched by the master's hand. There's people that's bound and there's programs there and I'm not knocking programs but I can tell you this, the touch of Christ is an immediate thing and when he touched her, he delivered her and he set her free for the Bible said that whomsoever the sun sets free is what? Free indeed. Free indeed indeed and immediately she could feel the touch of God I'm not a preacher I'm not ever going to tell you you got something but I will tell you this you trust him and you believe you won't have to have me tell you you got anything I've been around this thing long enough I've seen things I'll be I I've been in church where I've got just about as aggravated standing right up here. We're, we're not right here, but in altars like we are right now with people in church as I, as I can get. I've had people seeking the baptism and the Holy Ghost. I've had people over here, oh, they've got it. Oh, they've got it. I'm here to tell you, nobody on this globe had to tell me when I got it. Nobody. I knew I had it. I knew I had it. But I've had, I've seen people. I had a man to get plumb upset with me one night in camp meeting. Open air camp meeting. Got plumb upset with me. Because I wouldn't tell a brother he had the Holy Ghost. I said he don't need me to tell him he's got it. He's got it. He's going to know he's got it. You don't need my help. You, you don't need me to tell you you're saved. When you get right with God, you're going to know you've been touched by the Master's hand. Immediately, this verse said, this lady realized that that infirmity, that that bond, that that trouble in her life was no longer there. I could tell you when Christ moves in and begins to work in my life and yours, you don't need a committee to vote on it. You'll know that you've been set free. She went home from there. She went home from there different than what she came. Can I just say to us tonight that's the way church ought to be for us every time. <laughs> It ought to be different. We ought to go home different than when we came. Oh, a lot of people come, they come all right and they'll go home mad, but we ought to go home different. I'm, when I'm talking about different, I'm talking about being touched by God. I'm talking about being in the throne room and in the presence of the King of glory until we've heard his voice and felt his touch and left there beyond the point of what we came in. Because friend, if we come in like we went out, then we didn't get what we needed. But may we stay to the place and in the realm of God's glory where the power of his anointing flows like a mighty 
paper that takes out the things in our life that's unprofitable. If you don't think that an overflowing won't do the water a little good, go down here and look off that bridge in a minute. There's debris coming down all the way and it's coming down from the head and it's going right on down. That's the things that's dead along the shore of that river. It didn't take much but it took a downpour to wash that thing loose and dislodge it. Oh God send us a downpour of your spirit to dislodge the things that's unprofitable to us, that's hindering us, that's hampering us, that's cluttering up our life but God send a move that we'll be different than when we came. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. I can tell you one thing. A downpour move your life. A downpour move your life. You can't go out here on outside this building. Ain't none of us in here. Go out here and turn that water faucet on high. We can hold our hand over it for just a short period of time and stop the flow somewhat. But not a one of us in here is going to be able to hold that after a while. Do you know why pressure is going to build? And I can tell you this, when you allow God to move, when you allow God to move in your life, let me just lay it out, and this is a small scale example of what I'm fixing to say. But let me ask you something tonight. Is there any one of us can walk down here and cross out in this little Buffalo River and spread our arms out in that and say, we're going to hold back little Buffalo tonight and think that we can? No, they're not. Not all of us together. We could arm link together and go across there. We might be able, and I know we couldn't even in arm's length go across it because it's up big and it's running full. You wouldn't even try, would you? You wouldn't even try. But can I just ask you something? How many people bind the Spirit of God from moving in their life because of things that's just there and they hinder and they just allow this or that or whatever? When God's desiring to flow and flood through them with such a mighty force, but all of a sudden the powers of the enemy just rushes things back in mind and they get they get and it just brings them back out and rather than in. Friend, it's our choice with what we do. Jesus spoke to her. She came and he touched her. I wonder, only, only, only when we get to heaven will we know. But I wonder how many times in the last, I don't know, let's just say the last 15 to 18 years. I just wonder how many times that God has spoke to people in our community. Said, I want you to go down there to church tonight. Wonder how many times that the Holy Ghost has just drawed them, said, go down there Sunday morning and be in the house of God with the people there. Wonder how many times that God has, has quickened their heart and said, I want to save you, I want to draw you out of this pit and this place that you're in. But yet they refused him. And they said, No, we'll not. We'll not. And they have moved away from God rather than to Him. This lady come to the realization that she couldn't do anything of herself. She realized that she had to have Christ more than what she had to have of herself. And she realized that she couldn't do any more than what she was doing. How many folks go through their day-to-day -day life trying to do things herself? I can tell you, many. I have talked to people, folks. I realize that we have, we have, you know, the ability to do so sometimes in the ministry. But I have talked to people. You've been around this enough and, 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 and seen and going through seeing people in that state and I have seen people in that state a lot of times. I can pretty well, I can have a pretty good inclination 
but just the, 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 the things that transpire. I've went into a many a room, and I, or not a many, but I've been in some, and I've talked to them about their soul and about where they would spend eternity looking at them, seeing where they were, hearing what they were telling me, knowing what I've heard and saw before, and hear them to say to me, well, you know, um, they've got this new thing. They're going to do something different next, starting next week. Rather than say, Lord, I need you right now. I've seen God deal with people. And I pray that somewhere after I was gone, I pray that they got their, right, their, their life right. But I can tell you I have talked to them and had them to just say, well, you know, I'm looking for this, this treatment over here. I'm looking for that over there. Or just plain out and say, no, I don't want to. You say, Steve, you mean people are that cold and that hard? They are. I have never, and I hope I don't, but I've had other preachers and people to tell me they went and witnessed to people and talked to people and had them to, to uh, talk to them, to lead them to the Lord and ask them if they'd like to give their life to the Lord and them say, no, no, I've lived my life all this whole time and, and, and I'm not going to now. For the life of me, I don't understand. But I can tell you this, this lady realized that she could not do anything of herself. And she, do, and she realized this. Jesus, I need you. And she, and with all of her heart, she came to him. He touched her. And he made her whole. We find down here, and then we're coming to a close with this tonight. So then the Lord answered and he said, These were the people that were railing and ridiculing Jesus for healing on the Sabbath day. He had compassion on her for the state that she was in. And he said to them, he said, verse 15, he said, Thou hypocrite, he said, Doeth not each one of you on the Sabbath day loose his ox or his donkey from the stall and lead him away to watering? You see, they cared more about their animals and the welfare of them than what they did about this woman being made whole. Christ said, And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, lo, these eighteen years, he said, Ought not she be loosed from the bond on the Sabbath day? Jesus said, This lady don't need to stay in this state one day longer. We're not going to wait till the next day. We're not going to wait till tomorrow. She doesn't need to stay like this any longer. They cared more about it wasn't a problem if they watered their donkey or their, or their cow on a Sabbath day. You know why? Because that went against the law. Christ fulfilled the law. There was to be no work done. And watering your cow and watering your donkey would have been considered that. If he is in a ditch, you wasn't supposed to get him out. You're supposed to leave him in there. But Jesus said, you're taking more thought for them. He said, this lady needs to be made whole. I want you to realize something. Christ didn't desire for her to suffer one more night. My mind goes back to what Pharaoh said when they asked him about the frogs. He said, one more night with them. He didn't, Jesus didn't desire for this woman to have one more night in this state. Because he said, enough is enough. And I can touch you, and you can be made whole. When we, make, when we come to the realization that enough is enough, the touch of Christ can change our life forever if we will allow it. If we'll just turn ourselves over to Him and say, Lord, here it is. I desire what you've got for me. I don't know what it may pertain to. I don't know what I may face. don't know what I may go through. But God, I'm going to do whatever it is you'd have me to do. There's a world of people that are not turning loose to, to the things of the Lord because they're afraid of what God might ask them to do. They're, they're terrified of that. They're terrified that God might actually move me out of my comfort zone. 
He might actually move me out from this little place, my little old rug that I've been so snug in for so long. Take me out somewhere where I'm not just as comfortable as I am. But can I tell you something? This lady in her state had grown to the place. She needed something in her life. And when Christ touched her, she was made straight that very moment. See, the enemy had had her bound for so long in believing that this is the way, no question, believing this is the way that it'll always be. But when Christ touched her, when He touched her, she's made whole. Would you bow your heads with me tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. First and foremost tonight, I wonder if there's anybody anywhere in this house do not know Jesus as your personal Savior, and you want to. You want to make Him Lord of your life tonight. I don't never like to end a service, regardless of what I think I might know or not know, without giving this opportunity. Because I don't know, I may never have another opportunity to give it again. So if there's anybody in this house tonight you don't know the Lord, but you'd like to accept Jesus as your personal Savior, you want to get up and come tonight, we'd be more than happy to pray with you. We'd be more than happy to help you any way we can. This altar's open tonight. Maybe you can see the way things are shaping up. I can tell you if a person can't see it right now, they need their eyes opened because things is coming to a close. Now then, church, for you and I tonight, may we be alert and may we be aware of where we are. May we not be content where we are spiritually. May we not be just satisfied at this place that I'm at with the things of God. But we as men and women of God must ever be going forward. And if we are not moving forward, then we are becoming stale and lukewarm. We've got to ever move toward the things of God. Because if we do not, the enemy will have something along in your way. Just waiting. Just waiting. Let's get close to him. Let's get close to him. If you're able tonight and can, would you come? Let's find us a place to pray. I can assure you, we as a church have got a lot to pray about tonight. We've got a lot to pray about. If you want to sit there at your seat, that's 